execution okay. provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Snap Terms, online legal protection made simple. Visit snapterms.com and enter the code TWIST to receive a free NDA with every order. And by MailChimp. Manage lists with up to 2,000 subscribers and send up to 12,000 emails per month for free with MailChimp. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's This Week in Startups. I am Jason Calacanis. What an amazing program we have for you. Jason Shellen is on the program, serial entrepreneur. Anil Dash, famous blogger. They were actually rivals back in the day with uh, Movable Type and Blogger.com, so we're going to do a little da uh, trip down memory lane with that. But there's a lot of news for us to talk about. The NSA is tapping everything. Uh, what else is going on, Karen? Tell me. Yahoo's buying Quickie. Maybe Fab's raising a big round. Fab raised a big round. Makerbot got Zobby's fired. getting sold. Makerbot, 400 Instagram million. Instagram video. Instagram uh, launch video. It's going to be a hell of a program. Stick with us. That's what it's all about, man. Hey, Sid. Funny is the root of all evil. But funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't going to live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't going to live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. This is This Week in Startups, our news roundtable edition with me, Kieran Kalia, to read the news. Kieran, how are you doing? I'm excellent. How are you? Executive Director of Launch, and you're pretty excited. They got a big smile on your face because... We have a new producer. Executive producer coming, which means yes. your life gets a hell of a lot easier. It does. Very but nice. this has been great fun. It's been great fun. You're still yeah. going to read the news. Of course. She's going to be producing, so she'll be out there doing a little directing, and the show is going to get better and better. We're investing more and more into the program for you, our loyal listeners. 100,000 strong. Every episode, more than 100,000 downloads, 365, 362 episodes in, and boy, the show is just... It's hitting a high water mark because of the hard work and production value. Brandis, Jason DeMont, Emily, Kieran, Karut, thanks to everybody for putting Luke, everybody putting so much hard work into the program. Couldn't do it without you guys. Although, let's face it, I am the reason the show is pretty great. I mean, I'm a pretty great host. Your humbleness is My hum so charming. <laughs> it was a really great interview with Kara Swisher. People are going crazy it for that It was one. a very – but Kara's a great guest. It is. See, I can do really well she if I have a but. I like that she said but. But? but. Kara's a great guest. That is true. That is true. Yeah, Karen's a little sassy. She, and uh, of course, with me on the program there, and many of you know Jason Shellen at Shellen. Jason is a serial entrepreneur. Of course, was involved in Blogger, and then what after that? Then you went to Google for a while. Uh, yeah, we sold to Google. I was yep. there for four and a half years. You made a little money. I worked on Google Reader. Uh, made made Google Reader go. But you made a little money when Blogger sold. Well, sure. You could have stopped working. It was uh, enough money to I stop working? Know. It was, It was. yeah, well, it was fun. Yeah. Was, was She's always like, Silicon Valley thing. Everybody's very humble. He, all right, let me, right, I'll just right. break it down for you. Jason doesn't have a jet, neither do I, but he doesn't have to go <laughs> to work anymore. He's done very well. But you're a serial entrepreneur. You keep building stuff. Yeah, so the next thing was uh, Brizzly, which a lot of people remember was the uh, uh, social yes. media reader. Right. Sold that to AOL in 2010. Right, I forgot about that. And then I ran Was AIM. that a success or was that like a sideways thing as an entrepreneur? It wasn't a sideways thing as an entrepreneur. It was, uh, we were working on group uh, messaging, yeah, which we were sort of like first group messaging sale, yeah, and uh, they they made us a very tasty offer at AOL, oh, so was which good. was, hey, you should come run AIM and build in all that tech. So you did spend a, you spent over a year at Google. Yeah, uh, at, at Google I was there four and a half years. At AOL cool. I was there for about a year and a half. Yeah. So you spent half about a thirty year career inside of big companies and two thirds out. Sure, something to that effect. And yeah. now you've got a new product. Yes, new product called Boxer. And what is that? That Boxer is uh, it's your inbox for Gmail and Yahoo and Exchange. Um, mm. It uh, it's kind of that perfect blend of the of your your inbox from you know your personal sources as well as work, and then it uh, layers on a bunch of different gesture based things. And ah. so, uh, famously, we we added like to email. So ah. you can actually swipe and like your email, and someone ah. gets a message that says, oh, uh, hey. That's a great behavioral hook. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And then like we it. add, uh, like, all these and little And, of course, things. people would come to mind would be Mailbox, I guess, as somebody who innovated in that space. And yeah, they were, the they were. Yeah, they did a great job at the, like, the triage portion. Mm -hmm. But we have a belief that um, it goes beyond uh, just, just the triage. You need to be able to respond and manage email as well ah, yeah. uh, on mobile because these are, like, email viewing devices right now. Yeah. So like is that first gesture in the, in the uh, you know, in that direction towards awesome. being able to respond. And people can go check it out right now? Getboxer.com. Go to getboxer.com. Everybody check it out. And also, uh, from New York City or D.C., where are you, Anil? I'm in New York. You're in New York. New York, New York. I'm the, in Manhattan. The city's so great. They named it twice. Anil Dash, of course, worked at Movable Type. And... Mm -hmm. uh, 
then what did you do after that? We just and of course you're a famous blogger. Different stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, was running a nonprofit called Expert Labs, uh, mm -hmm. working around uh, public policy, trying to get people engaged that way. Uh, I have a consultancy called Activate, and now I'm doing my first actual hands dirty startup in a long time with mm -hmm. uh, ThinkUp. Awesome. Uh, Co-founding with uh, Gina Trapani. Oh wow, Gina Trapani of uh, famously of, of Life Hacker fame. Yes, and also uh, this week in Google. Grew she grew up. A, she grew up like really close to you, as I was, as I recall. She told yeah, me, so she I um, tried to hire her like five times, but it was an, in so much to but hire. I, <laughs> I, I just tried to hire her really just to, and I told her like, I'm here's an offer, please forward mm -hmm. it to your boss, twenty percent more than whatever you're getting, and blah 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 <laughs> blah, and I'll give you equity in whatever you create, and just send it to Nick Denton just to bust his chops. It was my favorite thing to do to Nick was make no, offers to his true. talent because I it's it's true. sort of like. You ever, you know, it's like that show where they do the auctions, like uh, with the lockers. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's that called? Oh, the know? terrible A and E show. Oh, this. See, this is why we have the peanut gallery Story here. Story. Very good peanut gallery. Uh, so the, the, there's our peanut gallery. Look, super fans, everybody. There they are. Um. Super fans. Very good. Um, where sometimes they just auction stuff up just to get people, just to screw the other guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why someone wouldn't feel respected by your offer to auction them off at a higher price. No, why not? This is why I love having a deal on the program. It's yeah, up to me. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems so respectful. It does, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, people's feelings. I th That's listen, good. I would love to have somebody make me offers. All right, uh, mm -hmm. we got a lot of news to get to. Let's do one story. Oh no, let me read it. Uh, should I read it or do a story? What do I do first? Up to you. It's your show. Um, let's do one story, then an ad. One story, then an ad. That would be good. Okay. Uh, first story, go. You wanted to start with the wonderful John McAfee video. No, no, let's save that. No? Let's go with something serious. What's okay. this most serious story? The most serious story is the NSA stuff, right? So, All right, let's do that. You know, this broke a couple weeks ago. Lots of stuff came out just this week. Uh, it looks like Edward Snowden has more goodies to, to give. Um, the NSA has, of course, come out since then and said that, you know, the intelligence they've gotten helped with preventing plots. Um, but, you know, NSA has also been partnering just this morning, we found out, with the British spy agency, GCHQ. Uh, GCHQ, it turns out, has its hands tapped into the actual fiber optic cable, so it's collecting everything. Yummy. Yep. What, what, what do you mean by uh, it, it has been working? Literally, like, like the last 18 months, they've had their hands inside the fiber optic cables, and they can capture everything that's passing through. Here, so I'll, re I'll read it from calls. the ticker here. UK spy agency, GCHQ, I don't even know what that is. That's a British spy agency. Sounds like a startup. Sounds like a cool startup. Yeah, is that on AngelList? They were has, in White Combinator <laughs> yeah. last year. I think they were White Combinator in yeah. 2008, yeah. Uh, has access yeah, yeah. to fiber optics cable carrying calls and internet traffic starting to process info and shares with NSA. Operation Tempora stores... Tempora, really? I'll take a side of Tempora. Stores yeah. data for up to 30 days, running for 18 months. Data include content of emails, Facebook posts, browsing history. Lawyers told NSA Analyst UK has a light oversight regime compared to the U.S., Interesting. What do you, what do you, what's your take on this, Anil? How should we think so, about what's couple, happening today? That's, I mean, I think the ground rules is that people, I don't know if people even know the difference between CIA, NSA, FBI, right? So FBI is um, domestic and they're a civilian agency, right? And um, CIA is a civilian agency charged with um, uh, working for uh, foreign intel or for domestic intelligence. And then NSA is their domain, I will they cover is spying on stuff that's outside the U.S., right? They're a military agency, but they're, they're, what they're supposed to do, their job is to tap the phones of people outside of the U.S. to find out about threats to us. So right. now, like, there's, you can disagree or agree, but, like, I think the consensus that we reach is, okay, we should have some ability to monitor communications outside the U.S. for non-citizens, non-Americans that we want to monitor. So that's the sort of ground rules. And I think what's interesting is, like, much of the sort of, the debate here is actually about what the NSA does. Because once you grant that, once you grant that we think we should have that ability, then it's like, oh, well, it turns out a huge percentage of the conversations that people have outside the US happen on American services, right? Because uh, they, mm -hmm. they use Gmail, and then they use Facebook, and they use whatever else. Yeah, AIM. Twitter, and then, AIM. Right, tw right, right, AIM, exactly. And then the whole conversation comes from that. It's like, okay, well, given that, the job is to spy on people who aren't Americans, or outside of America, and those people use services based in America, what do you do about it? And mm. that's the whole thing, right? Like the, the, so the are you personally like, worried? Do you think that it's, it's become overreaching, Anil? Do you feel that we yeah, need to yeah. have more oversight? Are you so upset about no question, it, or are you okay with it? There's no question there's overreach, but it's because of the little acts we passed for the Patriot Act and for um, some of the extensions to FISA that say the judicial oversight part 
is essentially neutered. So the theory was, if you're going to do anything, even like accidentally capturing some stuff with Americans, like people that are domestic, then you have to get a court order to say that. The problem is the court orders have become total rubber stamps. Hmm. Right. Like it's just you, right. you, it's just paperwork. You, you send it up, and the court just sends it back. Like, Jason, and let me, they, let me they show you Jason here for a second. Jason, uh, you're in Silicon Valley. Is it dis- and you're an old school guy? You've been in this business for two decades. Is it disappointing for you that all these internet companies seem to be embracing this or involved in it and not standing up against it when the whole point of the internet was to try to empower people, give them more privacy, take down gatekeepers? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that that you know my wife keeps saying I'm surprised that you're surprised that any of this is coming out because I've been telling her for years you know privacy is an illusion. And I feel like we just had somebody, you know, give us a, a an acknowledgement of that, saying like, "Oh, yeah, you're right. It is an illusion, right?" Yeah, confirmed. So I, so I feel like confirmed. So the reason I'm surprised is that it was confirmed, not just that I'm, you know, a tin foil hat wearing uh, person. But having seen this inside of companies, I think it comes down to the people. Much like when people blame the government for mm-hmm. things, the government is made up of us. They're right. people, right? My my brother happens to work for a, a government agency. It's it's people. It's made of people. Uh, and people so who follow orders, people who maybe follow orders or, or people who, you know, maybe like Snowden, who stand up and, and are whistleblowers. Uh, and I think the same thing of companies as well. So I'm, I'm very proud of companies like Twitter and Google who are now kind of pushing back and saying, look, we need to be able to at least you, you've been telling us what we have to do. And now we're pushing back and saying this is what we they need are to do. actually making requests. Now they're requesting yes. that the requests be public. Right. And I think which what would be a good is, step, right? More. Because how can you have oversight on something that's secret? This is the thing I can't understand. Exactly, right. Well, I, I've also been inside um, some other companies where people are more complicit. And when they, uh, you know, and maybe... Maybe D.C.-based companies. Maybe the closer you get to D.C., the, the more, the, the more likely get. and complicit you are in, well, we had better do this. Yeah. This is a, you know, when someone says this is a matter of national uh, security, yeah. you know, you perk up, you sit up. You know, anybody uh, might perk up and listen to that. But how that gets enacted, and I think to Anil's point, I, we have not had the brightest minds in the world sitting down thinking about how to do this. We've had the NSA, and I'm sure there are very bright people over there, doing this work in secret. So I think if we came about and said, you know, from a Silicon Valley perspective, we would say, let's get the smartest people on this. Let's mm. let's uh, engage with Yahoo and AOL and, and Facebook and say, what would be the right way to do this? And it, it does not feel like that's happened at all. Hey, Anil, um, you and I have gotten into it about, you know, sort of a global perspective. Obviously, I'm an American, and I, I kind of think myopically sometimes, but you actually think uh, very globally at times, um, and, and we've had a bunch of back and forth on Twitter. So I'll ask you, we are spying on everybody else in the world, and no Americans have a problem with that. The Russians and the Chinese uh, are spying on everybody, and forget about the Middle East, where, I mean, by default, you can't even have devices in there that have security, BlackBerry being uh, being banned, i.e. So are we hypocrites? No, it's a good question. I I think there's a legitimate argument that um, we should be able to monitor other countries, every country monitors other countries. You know, I I think there's, there's there's a real question about what are our goals? And part of it is the assumptions are wrong technologically, right? So the, all the rules were built at a time when a tapping into a wire meant a specific thing, right? Like everything was based on a geography. There was no IP routing things off, off different servers all over the world. And so when we say, like, the, it, this is, you know, separate but related, the, the phone tapping stuff, they say, oh, it's just metadata. There's no such thing, right? Like AOL itself that released a bunch of search records back in, what was it, 05 or 06? Yeah. Right. You know, like, oh, it's just the metadata, it's all anonymized. And right. Like, guess what? It took like two seconds to reconstitute exactly who these people were. And so yeah, if you have the, the metadata right. of who I call, you know who I am. Of course exactly. you know who I am. Right. You look that, at my call logs, and it's like, who calls my wife every day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, it's interesting. You know, it's not like, that hard to guess. When the search thing came out, they actually found people who were searching, because they matched search IDs to individuals. Mm. They found people who were searching for how to kill my wife or poison and this. Right. And then they found them searching for themselves and doing vanity searches or searching for the school. And they tracked it down. Mm. Like, hey, by the way, knock, knock, knock. Did you know these are your search results? The New York Times mm-hmm. famously found one of the women whose search results, you know, like some 60-year-old biddy in like Kansas City who had her AOL search results exposed. And she was like, really? They can do that? Right. Um, yeah. She and was just curious. That's the thing is, we, we're not the no, that one wasn't her that killing. So that was her like searching for kittens. But there was, right, right. you know, that's good. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the laws haven't haven't reflected that. So the fact that they make this distinction between oh, it's just metadata mm-hmm. and data shows they're not talking about the, the modern world. And and they they don't realize 
you can make a law on paper, and Moore's law can change the meaning of the government's law. You know what I think? I think we're playing the short game instead of the long game, and we need to get back into the long game. America mm -hmm. needs to get back into the long game. The short game is, let's prevent a terrorist attack. Right. Which is n important. I'm a New Yorker, very fa impacted by 9-11, and I think we should try to stop terrorist attacks. I don't think anybody can right. fight against that. But the truth is, there's, <laughs> very, few, there's yeah. very few of them. Right. More people die, like I read in the New York Times, 700 people a year die on ATVs, four by fours. Sure. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, that's a magnitude yeah, more than terrorism. Like, so are we going to put GPS devices in those and monitor those or, or ban them? Right. We're, America had a great run <laughs> based upon the This sounds the like a, a note of, of finality at the end of it. Listen, the Declaration of Human Rights, mm -hmm. individual freedoms, privacy, mm -hmm. and being an example of how to run a country where individuals had more power than their government and they had control over it. And now we're showing the world an example, which is we don't believe in what we used to stand for. And that's the problem. Right. It's more painful to play the long game. Yes. Playing the long game means you don't have the tools that the bad guys have. Right. Well, Cheaters I mean, are going to beat you. I mean, that's, that's but we need to play line. the long game. I agree. That's, that's the bottom line. You're, you're, cost, you're saying we want to bet lives that liberty matters more, right? Which is fortunately how the country started, but also unfortunately the thing that we are no longer able to do. We don't see it as patriotic to say, well, I'm, I choose to live with a theoretical higher risk because of this. And I, actually the funny thing about this, I was reading, uh, you might know Brandon Kerner, but he, he's written for Wired and a bunch of other folks, great author. Um, he put out a book, uh, The Skies Belong to Us. So I didn't know this, back in like late 60s, early 70s, there was a hijacking every week. People just do it for fun, right? Like, so they're like, mm -hmm. I want to go to Cuba, or I want to rescue Angela Davis from being <laughs> arrested, or whatever. And they're just like hijacking planes every week. So, like, that thing that's the boogeyman now was routine 40 years ago. Um, and, and, like, and I think that's like th that, that there was an acceptable risk. And I mean, they've obviously dialed it down since then, but like, not saying we need to do it every week. But the world didn't end even when this happened all the time. Hmm. There's a great movie, by the way, called. Uh what was it? Carlos. Go see the film, Carlos the Jackal. The Jackal, yeah. Oh, the incredible. Jackal. This guy, Carlos the Jackal, there's a film just called Carlos about him. Uh, and it's uh, an incredible six hour. See the six hour version, not the. Um, see the six hour version, sure. not the two hour version of this miniseries. It is unbelievable. Sure. One of the best films I've seen. Bring seen the it? kids. No. No, no incredible miniseries hours. about the guy who basically did these. Uh, Things. Okay, listen, let's take a commercial real, break. Fab, it's really depressing when we get back and talk about <laughs> less depressing stuff. Than the fab. Time. We'll talk about fab. <laughs> fab raising lots of money. All right, uh, who's our advertiser? Somebody help me out here. What's, who's first? Who's first Snap here? Terms. Oh, Snap Terms. That makes my life easy. Listen, everybody needs to have a Terms of Service. You've done Terms of Service a million times, Jason Shellen. I have. And you spent thousands and thousands of dollars doing them, didn't you? Yes. And when you get that legal bill, you want to puke, don't you? A little. A little bit of puke comes a up. A little. Throat. Right now, it's not terms like we paid how much for this ad? It's talking about vomiting. But it is that <laughs> like vomit inducing moment when you get that legal bill and you pay $10,000 for what you know. It's strictly cut and pasted terms of service for you to put on your website, Boxer. Right? Right. Disaster. But somebody solved that problem because everybody said, hey, there should be a solution to that. And that company is Snap Terms. Uh, if you don't have a proper terms of service or privacy policy, you are risking costly litigation, i.e. PATH and other people who have gotten themselves dinged very recently. It's simple, it's affordable, and it's the fastest way to protect your website with a proper terms of service and privacy policy. We use it here at thisweekend.com slash legal. Go take a look. They're funny. They put like interesting things in there. And you only need to go to snapterms.com to get started for only $299. I didn't say $299.9, not $2,999, which would be... 29% of what you're going to pay a law firm. I said 299, which is 3% of what you're going to pay a law firm. This is an amazing deal. You have no excuse. Use the coupon code TWIST and you'll get 10% off your order and they even have solutions for more complex businesses. It's really easy to do. Forward your Snap Terms confirmation email to snapterms at launch.co. So after you sign up, send it to snapterms at launch.co and you will be entered into a signed iPad mini like this. I'll sign it. And uh, you'll be like, why did it, please don't sign it. Just give me the, I'm trying to sell this on eBay. Don't sign, sign. Anyway, I'll sign it. I'll, I'll put a personal message about how awesome your startup is. And uh, you'll win that. So thanks again. Everybody thank at Snap Terms. If you're a true fan of the show, it is your geary. It is your honor. It is your duty 
to thank at Snap Terms, and I thank at Snap Terms for making my life easier. Great job, everybody. All right, next story. All right, fab. so oh, you fab. want to talk about Fab? Sure. So Fab is raising another round. This is the first part, $150 million as part of a Series D, and they have- Don't tell me the valuation. One billion dollar valuation. Oh God, I'm so- Yeah, I know you miss out on this one. You still kicking yourself. I could have invested at a five million dollar valuation, I think, yep. maybe 10. So uh, they're, an idiot. they're getting the investment for international growth to expand their mobile mm -hmm. and social. Now, interestingly, the investors include Tencent, which is a you know, big Chinese really, firm. Really, the rapper? No. No, that's 50 cent, right. Yes. Tencent, the Chinese firm. Yes. So they're going to help them expand in China. It's a strategic oh, wow. investment. Yep. That's a big deal. Um, and along with some of their existing investors, Atomico, Andreessen Horowitz, and so forth. So hmm. uh, they're probably going to be more coming out. Um, total investment right now is $310 million. Hello. And um, where do you think this is going to lead? I mean... Anil, you're in New York. What's the vibe on the street? Are people thinking, oh, my God, this company is you know, really great. They have great products but they're maybe raising yeah. too much money? What's the vibe? I think there's there's an interest in it, but there's the sort of... All right, we lost Anil for there. What's your thought on it, Jason? You start so, seeing these mega valuations and everything. So, I mean, the mega valuation I'm less worried about than I am the, um, uh, I, I guess the... Uh, is this a good signal for other e-commerce companies, right? Like, is it is it actually... Uh, does it mean that e-commerce like e e is coming alive? Right. Uh, or, or does it mean Fab's doing really well? Right. right? Which I, I think it's more the case that Fab's doing really well. I, right. With, with the caveat that I think what's interesting about at Fab is that it, it's kind of piggybacking and making commercial a little bit of that maker movement, right? So I ah, think. Um, explain that. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of the things on Fab are um, demand based, right? Would, would someone want this? And when it's available, you know, you're able to purchase it. Um, mm -hmm. I think I bought an iPhone case through there. So my concern about Fab so you is think, yeah, long a lot of term is, yeah. whether or not it's uh, if it's Groupon in a couple of years, like where it does yeah, have a high point valuation. The thing that jumps out, like their design sense is really good, but what is really funny is I don't know if, how many customers they did this for, but they sent out like a box with cards in it of just products that I guess the founders liked. I, I don't even know what it was, but it's like kind of baseball trading cards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're supposed to be coasters or what. <laughs> and and a bunch of folks in town got these things. And everybody I talked to was like, okay, they raised too much money. And this was actually before <laughs> the round was announced. But as soon like as soon as you get this like unsolicited direct mail, thick, mm -hmm. like nice card stock thing mailed to you, like, what hmm. what does this have to do with anything? And that was Maybe they'd had some money in the bank from it, but they hadn't announced the round yet. And and every single person I know that got it, my wife got it. And I was like, what's that? And she's like, I've ordered one thing ever from Fab, and they just sent me what must have cost $10 in cards. Here's the thing. Fab is Pinterest where you can buy, right? It's so f much fun to just flip through Fab. Like every, I, you know, I'm not like a, big into design stuff or whatever. And, mm -hmm. But when I get on there, I could just disappear for like 20 minutes. Like, I'm look at this. I'm looking at these like chairs. Like, I'm not going to buy this plastic chair, but I think it's kind of cool. And like the price is really good. And the store, I mean, right. I could just sit on here for hours. And I'm like, wow, you know, my wife. I thought the I thought the Fancy did a good job of that as well. Where Fancy is great. But right. they don't make the products, right? They just connect They don't make the, the products. Sales. They connect to you. But I mean, when, when I look at the opportunity that Pinterest has in front of them, I mean, the, their ability to connect you with any single product on the planet, whether or not Fab has a deal with these Should folks or Pinterest not. Should Pinterest start manufacturing and going direct to consumer and be like Warby Parker and be like Fab? I don't know. I don't know that they should, but no. I think they should. Yeah, no. they should have a connection. Why not, Anil? Yeah. Wouldn't this be never, like the... Never carry inventory is why not. <laughs> well, Apple yeah. carries inventory, and they seem to be doing okay. That's true. Every time you go to an example and it's like, well, Apple does this, that's the that's the, actually the disproof. Right. right? Like, the, oh, because why? That's the counter why? example, yeah. Because they're Apple, yeah. and they can they're pull Apple. it off. They're so damn good. Well, they have a certain prerogative and perspective on the world, right? So Pinterest is, uh, I always say, like, you know, you should double down on what you're good at, right? Uh, and maybe you'll be great at it. And I think if Well, Pinterest and Apple became the Apple we know, like, a good solid 20 or 30 years after they started, right? Like, they went public before they had the Mac. So you can't say be Apple in some meaningful sense to a company that's three years old. Hey, sure. guys, just uh, as a quote, like, because we're trying to do these things on LinkedIn where we take out certain quotes that are great, Jason Shellen just dropped mad knowledge. Double go. down on what you're good at and be great at it. And maybe you'll be great at it. And maybe you'll be great at maybe it. That is some 
There you go. Clip this. That's that was what... like the entrepreneur <laughs> moment of that's just editorial gold. Anil, you're gonna have to catch that, up. Uh, that is that oh, my Seth, Seth Godin T-shirt type ish going on right there. Yeah, right. that could right. be like we're that's just good. we should just like somebody in my audience make a a, yeah. a clip of that where he Jason Challenger says it over and over again for five minutes. There you go. And right. just like that's make like it make. Oh, now wait, off. is that is you that, understand my audience? This is that Vine length or is that? No, no, Instagram, Instagram video. video. I'm thinking yeah. we go Instagram video. Okay. Here's the thing. My audience is so insane that they will make a dubstep remix of you saying double down on what you're good at. And, and it may be done by the end of today. Um, I really I think look forward to that. that Fab is going to have, because Jason, uh, Jason um, Goldberg. Goldberg was on the program. Fantastic guest on the program. Link we to do have right a clip. Here. Oh, we have a clip. Play the clip. Here he goes. You know, I, I, to be honest, I spend very little time thinking about how to explain the business to investors. Yeah. Um, I show folks our data, I show the repeat buying rate, you know, two thirds of our sales comes from repeat buyers. Um, somebody who buys on Fab has a 65% chance to buy again. Um, yeah, I just, numbers I show, don't lie. Right, and it's just, here's the data, and if you, if you don't like the business, okay, it's okay too, because I'll yeah. find somebody who does with the numbers that look like this. Right. So that's the thing, I mean, he said two thirds of his customers yep. are repeat Repeats. customers, that's a fantastic statistic. Yep, and he's very confident in what they're building. All right, very okay. quickly, MakerBot, let's hear about that. All right, so MakerBot, you also had on the program when you were in New York last fall. We have a yeah. clip of that we can look at. Um, $403 million all-stock deal with Stratasys, wow. which is doing industrial 3D printing. Wow. And, um, you know, if some things... All-stock, I hadn't caught that. Yeah, it was all-stock. Are they stock public, deal. the other company yes, they acquired? Yes, yeah. Stratasys is, is public. Yeah. Now, their stock went up just a tiny bit on this news. Uh, clearly, they're trying to consolidate and be the, the 3D printing leader. Mm -hmm. um, so, so now they got the low end, because they're Stratasys, to be clear... Like buying one of those machines is a six-figure investment, and buying a MakerBot is like, like four figures yeah. investment. Low exactly. Figure, yeah. So MakerBot has sold twenty-two thousand three D printers to what? date. Eleven of the eleven thousand are the replicator twos, which they launched last fall. That's they, there, right. there are more Teslas on the road than there are MakerBot printers. I no, think, that's not true. Way. There's like fourteen right? Teslas. I think there's only fourteen or fifteen thousand Teslas. So including the the Roadster. Roadster, they only did three thousand, I believe. Oh, okay. Don't, All right. don't quote me on it, but. Anyway, it's it's a it's a race, right? Yeah. And so they they raised ten million dollars a couple of years ago from Lear, True Foundry, Bezos Expeditions. Yeah, you talked to him about the crazy that. investors, right? right? It's like Bezos and Foundry, which is Brad Feld. Right. I mean, those are two crazy individuals who would bet on something like this. What right. four years ago, five yeah. years ago? This is a great moment for those investors to bet on something so insane and have it pay off. I think. Indeed. So um, we can watch uh, Brie tell us uh, whether HP and Apple were interested in the space. We have that clip. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Okay, I, we're, I'm, I stay up at night thinking like, what happens if one of the big players get in? How yeah. can we? How, do, how are we getting ready for, for when this hits? Yeah, how do you become defensible when somebody at Apple says, we should make this, or yeah. somebody at HP we, says, we should make this? And so we just keep adding you know, value, adding verticals, adding ways that people, making it easy for people to do this and make it fun, accessible. Hmm. All right. Uh, Jason Chow, what do you think about this 3D printing? Is it legit? Is it, are people going to do this at home? I, you know, I kept waiting for HP to enter the space and yeah. have like a real printer that that, that does this. No, the laser no jet offense. equivalent, yeah. The laser jet, exactly. The 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 desktop uh, yeah. printing revolution uh, of uh, 3D goods, and they actually do have a product, and mm -hmm. it's terrible. And I don't actually expect HP to get any better at what they're doing unless they acquire Stratasys or someone like that. I think this this is an interesting moment in time where someone could. Become the apple of 3D printing, Anil. What do you yeah, think, Anil? Is I think this that's possible? You know, I, the biggest thing I come away with is like Bree is a real soulful, smart dude. This is a good guy winning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like just like, like except for the product, the category, whatever. This is the good guys winning, and that's so exciting. And I think <laughs> that idea of like you can love this thing, work on it. The, the sort of the dream of the entrepreneur. So many times we get distracted by somebody that doesn't actually care yeah. about the thing. Yeah. And like he lives, breathes, eats, sleep. He is that maker dude. He's got, you know, I've been over there. Our kids are the same age. And like the house has got the bits of plastic around and the toys that his daughter and my son play with together were printed on the printer. That's the thing. Like I'm, you know, you, $400 million uh, dollars is great too, but that's the thing. That's can somebody exciting. tell me, I, and that is very exciting and I'm, we're all very happy for him. It's, it is a good guy winning. Yeah. But can anybody tell me when this will become something like a television or a computer. Let's just use a computer as a metaphor. Sure. Like I, I think three, three years from now, Black Friday, you buy like some tablet and you'll get a 3D printer for free because they want you to buy the ink. Right. It's not, no. It's not long. Yeah. Guaranteed. You yeah, it really? Five, it's going to go from 2000 to free? 
Near well, free, free, near free. free, right? Free bundle, right? Like it's ah. like that Black Friday doorbuster, or whatever. All right, what am I going to buy on this thing? Because what what do I need that's essential? Well, I think there's there's access to all sorts of things. I was actually just talking to. Um, but that's what I was here. Like this, okay? There's there's everything, but everything is another way of saying nothing. I mean, yeah. People say everything sure. when they can't. Well, I'll give you an example. The, the example, and the only examples I hear is Christmas ornaments and toys for your kids. I, Not I think, enough for me. I think I think there are a couple of things there. One is uh, I was talking to Chris Anderson, uh, formerly of Wired, about this recently, and he was sharing what his kids were building with it. And he showed me uh, an app called uh, 3D, uh, I think it's 123D Catch. And what you do is you actually oh, no. take a physical oh, no. object and you take no. about 30 images of it while Get you out. shoot it with the camera. And it pulls up a, a 3D version of that object and you can, you know, you actually have grid points. So I think it's, um, you know, that, that technology that they use when they're trying to do animation, they have mm -hmm. the golf balls. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, you look ridiculous. To somebody, you look ridiculous. Yeah. I think the capture technology is actually going to get much better in the next few ah. years. And then you can replicate anything. So it's about yeah. that, you know, the, the thing that helped with desktop right, publishing so was... Every, we went from everything to anything. Can somebody give me right. the use case? Am I going to make a pen on this thing or sure. not? You, yeah, you'll make a pen on it. You'll make. No, you'll make... I, I don't think the pen is meaningful though, right? Because you're always, you're never gonna have the scale that big has. The thing that's useful to me is you haven't seen my phone. pen. Well, yeah, I, I don't mean to judge you. Very pen. special but pen. It's a it's a Brizzly special edition pen. Yeah, right. It's the, if the um, if every phone is a scanner and I've got that, I've had this where you're like you're waiting for the repair guy because I live in an old building and the only person that can do the little screw for those latches is this thing. If I can knock on the neighbor's door and be like, can I wave my phone over this thing so I can copy the screw? From your apartment, that okay. Would totally so, so maintenance, it's, and it's, and it's, yeah. But that's the thing is, it's it's not sexy. Like it's this prosaic no. everyday stuff. But if it saves me going, get in the car, go to the hardware store, or it saves me. I gotta wait because I had to mail order the adapter for this plug, and all it is is it involves waving my phone over somebody else's computer, somebody else's lamp, whatever I'm fixing. That's actually enough. Right. If the price is low, if you're down in that hundred dollar range, where you're like. I just have this in the closet in case I need it. Like you don't use a dust buster every day. It's not sexy, and then but you're that, glad you have it. Then that disrupts fab, actually. Back to fab. Well, that's, I'm pulling up fab right now, so, and I'm looking at the jewelry side expand. Yeah. So there's jewelry. There's there are things like iPhone cases. I mean, when when the technology gets good enough and maybe has different uh, grades of plastic that are yeah. being used. You know, you could decide to print a new iPhone case every week if you want to. Mm. But I think, um, you know, this is similar to the 90s. We've seen this story before with the CNC machines, right? Those are the ones that would take a, like a block of aluminum, mm -hmm. aluminum and, uh, you know, extrude it down to a little bit of a billet. And then they turned into, you know, bike components or wow. car components and things like that. So I, while I'm, you know, watching this 3D printing with some amount of awe, uh, I can't wait till it's actually metal. And then the maintenance things get more yeah, interesting see, to, to me. Yeah, that's to me is... When you first saw laser there, printers, the big, burly, huge ones, like it was like, okay, this takes like two minutes to print right. one page, and it was just like, this is ridiculous. I'm going right. to print a 30-page document an hour? No, right? right. And, it, and it cost $50,000. But when they became right. desktop size and they did a page a minute, and then it went to like two or three pages, it was like, I remember six pages a minute became like a big thing <laughs> because it went... Well, we, we all remember where we were when we saw six pages a yeah, minute. Yeah, and that was the HP2, I think. Well, yeah, it was like having a quad-speed CD-ROM drive. Like that was, that was <laughs> and, but it, it did, and then when the color ones came, when the price came down, all of a sudden it made sense. So are you saying it, this will start to make sense when metal is key or when there's better plastic? To me, Or the price point? I don't know. Or all those things? I know. Go for it. And he'll go. Yeah, you know, my, my sense is like, actually, our boundaries between what we think of as plasticky and what we think of as metal are going to change. Like, plastics are rapidly getting better, and there already are metal 3D printers. Like, materials, I'm not that worried about. I'm actually really interested in the, like, I printed this part, it worked right, or it didn't, and then I can throw it back in the hopper, melt it down, and reprint it with something else. Like, that sort of reusability mm -hmm. of I made a thing. I, even the sort of, like, stupid stuff. Like, I said, like, the boring, oh, that table always wobbles. I'm going to print the right size foot for that thing so that I can level the table, like instead of having a, a matchbook under there or something. I think those little boring things we're just going to take for granted. And the fact that you can go, presumably, if the big thing is with all this the case, it's not the hardware, it's the software. Mm -hmm. Imagine it's hooked up to the cloud and you just go through a catalog and it's not all this, like, if people keep printing crazy mugs and like 3D geometric art, I don't care, I don't care about any of that. Crap. Yeah, I don't care about any but, of that. You know, but yeah, I do, I do I feel like we're to say like I need the adapter for this stupid flashlight that I can't find the right bulb for. Right. And I can just go, you know, type in the model number, shows up on Google, click on it. And you have any interest print. in this, Kieran? You would want one of these? I don't think these mundane examples are enough to get me excited. Yeah. Personally, um, I see the value of it. Yeah. If you know, but 
I'm kind of wondering, you know, everyone thought you were going to want a printer at home to print your digital photos, mm -hmm. and nobody really seemed to care about doing that. If you want them, you happy to go to a service right. and, and have them print them and send them to you. Yeah, that's true. So why do you have to have it in your house if you're not going to use it that much? It could be interesting to actually have like that, you know, the, the thing that's down at CVS that prints my yeah, like good print. Exactly. Uh, prints yeah, just when print I do it up it. And, and it will come to you same day because somebody at Postmates you, drives it to your house. Because the me what, oh, I, understood, what I heard was that the, the metal ones will never be in your home because of chemicals and smoke and all this other stuff that detritus sure. that comes mm -hmm. off of it. Like, they're just too mechanically sure. noisy and crazy. So, so it's a Kinko's thing. It's it's a Kinko's It could thing. be a Kinko's CBS sort of thing. I think it gets interesting it? when it's garments, right? Mm -hmm. So I think um, this this move by Warby Parker and Everlane and folks like that who are coming up with new and interesting products, you know, if you were to abstract that a little bit and take it to the design level and say, look, do you want this Everlane shirt? Just go print it down the street, at, huh. you know, whatever, right? Yeah. So, then, then that gets with your some... exact measurements. After you took thirty photos of me in a circle with the right, 3D right, right, thing. exactly. There was somebody had I saw somebody wore maybe it was Lady Gaga. Somebody wore a three D printed dress to one of the award shows, mm -hmm. which I thought was pretty like hmm, interesting. Now we're but it, do they have three D printing for fabric? Uh, I mean, people That's are beginning well. to do you know jewelry and things like that, but no, not sure. not for yeah. fabric yet. They do have it for fabric, yeah. Yeah, it's well. There's actually there's one called the Loom. They've had that for a couple, about ten thousand years. Oh yeah, so uh, check out the Loom. They're gonna. All right, listen. <laughs> let me take a quick break. When we get back, we're gonna talk about Dig replacing Google RSS, um, and AOL announces an RSS reader, and just a little stroll down RSS memory lane, and John McAfee doing oh, bath boy. salts with strippers. I, they're clothed. Barely. Barely. They're wearing 3D printed dresses. And by the way, I apologize to, if they are truly thespians and not strippers. I'm gonna just apologize in advance. They could in fact be. Well, and, uh, you can. You they can could have. They could have left the Decloria De Theater in uh, Central Park and then done the shoot and gone back to do Macbeth. He's in Portland, Oregon, by the way. So then, probably not. They they could be part of the Portland Shakespeare Company, and they just decided they would dress like strippers and do bath salts with John McAfee yeah. for fun. Yeah. Insane. Okay. How do I segue from bath salts to Mailchimp? Listen, <laughs> if you're going out of your mind so much that you want to start taking bath salts because you can't get emails into your customer's email boxes, then use MailChimp. <laughs> That's it. That's the commercial. I'm done. No, seriously, I've been using email for five, six, seven years. It's brilliant. It's free if you have 2,000 people. I don't even need to look at the copy. Free if you have 2,000 people up to, what is it, 10,000 emails a month? 12,000 emails a month. 12,000. They keep raising it on me. 2,000 emails for free, 2,000 subscribers for free, 10,000 emails. The system works brilliantly. They have templates. We use it for uh, launch the launch ticker. ticker. I use it for Jason Nation email list. I use it for everything. Jason Shallon's not in his head. He probably has used it. It's a great product. Absolutely. It is one of the best design yeah. products. So even if you're in the business of making great software, just go check out MailChimp because it is one of the best software as a service products ever created. In and fact, they, it's in the top three. They just redesigned it. And they did redesign it. They're a good it. sponsor. We use their API. It's awesome. The API is fantastic. So if you want to just do calls into your list and make fancy sign up, unsign, but it's been fantastic for me. Easy sign up. I get into people's email boxes. And you know, I've been writing about this whole thing, like YouTube disintermediating us from our customers. You know what we did? We took the shows that we were building on YouTube, and there was three of them, Exit, MMA Surge, and then there was another one. Wellcast. Um, Wellcast. And I said, make a video asking people to join our mailing list. Start sending two emails a week. We start doing that. We get to three, four, five thousand emails for each show in three months. We had a hundred thousand subscribers. So we can, in other words, we were converting one percent of our YouTube subscribers over to email. That spells trouble for YouTube because if I can get to 20, 30, 40 percent, then I could send them to another service where I get a hundred percent of the ad revenue, where I can start publishing to those people first. It's incredibly powerful to do this. You need to get a list up on your personal site. Just start with that. If you've got a personal site, and everybody should have a personal site, their last name, kierancalia.com, whatever, put an email there and start collecting emails. Because then, down the road, you may wake up one day and have 500 emails, and they're the core constituency, and you can talk directly to them. This is critical. Own your customers with MailChimp. That was a pretty good ad. All right. I give myself credit That's for good. that one. That was That's pretty good. good. I think my ad's better than my commentary on the news sometimes. But anyway, I'm passionate about MailChimp, and they've been great to us. And they um, really, this program would not be where it is today without MailChimp. They're the longest-running sponsor on This Week in Startups, I believe. So go ahead and thank them. Thank at MailChimp. And by the way, who, who, who we got? No, you, no, 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 yo. It's not no, yo. It's no, you. No, yo. no, no, yo. No, yo is here. Now you guys launched at the launch festival. You got any? Did you win best design? What did you best win? Presentation. Best presentation. People loved you guys, huh? Yeah, really great. All right, there you go. Shock. 
Are, are, we, are we showing their camera or not? They're the, no, that's Danielle. And that's the Know You guys. Hi. So we had two Know You guys. You launched at the launch festival. Yes. And the premise of the company was what? Helping people remember the Indian taste. And people loved your presentation. It was fun mm -hmm. because you got on stage and you said, hey, does anybody know who this guy is? Yeah. This guy being the last guy who was on stage, what's his first name? And nobody did. No. And everybody laughed because you proved your point. It was Tyler Ouch. Crowley's idea. So it was Tyler, yeah, Tyler, oh, Tyler Crowley. Yeah. He's coming back for the summer right here. I have not heard. Yeah, we're going to have Tyler mm. on the show in J July. It's going to be a hot July of this week in startups. Um, so what's happened since? Give us the update. Things have been great. We've actually been piloting Know You with Expedia. We met someone at the launch festival from Expedia who wanted to use it internally. Really? Team. It's about 20 people. And about a week ago, we launched it for about like 300 plus people in the Bellevue launch. Festival. Oh, the mic's on the floor, by the way. Do we get any of that or no? Oh, okay. To say it one more time, and then she'll edit it uh, out, and then thank you, Brendan. Sure. So we, uh, we met someone from Expedia at the launch festival who uh -huh. wanted to use Noyo internally for about 20 people in awesome. his department. And we found out right after we used it with that small cohort that a lot of people in the Bellevue office wanted it as well. So we just launched oh, it about yeah. a week ago with about 350 people at Expedia. So that's been going really great. And, and the idea being, I uh, work at Expedia, and I want to know my network better. Yeah. And the better I know my network, the better of a business executive. Exactly. Office. So it's building that camaraderie, community, just by getting people to know who other people are. In the company or outside the company? So in the company. So ah. you're, you guys are going to hire an executive producer. You want her Gina, yeah. to come in the very first day. I only know, hire women for senior positions. Great. <laughs> to know everybody who she's going to work point, with. At this point, is the whole show female now? Brand is Gina Kieran. Yes. Pretty well, impressive. Luke selling the ads. Whatever. Look at the sales guy. Not, so, impo not an important not position. Important not important. This is a sales guy. <laughs> I mean, not, no, it's very important, obviously. Keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. But So what do you charge? $10 a person? $5 a person? So what? for smaller businesses, or your case scenario, it's actually free. Just getting people to know what Noyo is, driving yeah. the real traffic to bigger customers the like Expedia. premium thing, yeah. Exactly. And then what are you going to charge? Like and then Expedia? depending on the size of the company, between $200 a month to 10000 for Fortune 500 type companies. And it will build culture, won't it? Exactly. That's the well point. Done, guys. And who are you? Who's this guy who's a super fan over here? Give the super fan the mic. Hey, Brad Heitman. Yeah. Uh, starting a company called Trumio. We're actually building a. Search Are you on the twist list? Um, I am as of today. Oh, okay, good. All right. Good. Yeah. Twistlist.co. You can figure it Twistless. out. Twistlist.co. There you go. So, what are you doing? You're just a super fan who has to come and sit in the studio. I just have to come sit in the studio. Uh, where are you from? Uh, from Salt Lake City, actually. Oh, really? How long have you been uh, watching this program? Oh, gosh. Uh, probably a couple of years. You got a favorite episode? Uh, I actually really, and I know Kieran disagrees with me on this, but I actually really like the Santiago Chile episode. I just thought the enthusiasm was really interesting, huh. and to see a government program that wasn't screwing things up, yeah, I thought it was interesting. Yeah, well, giving people free money and flying them down there to do an incubator is a pretty exactly. good idea. Okay, yeah. give a quick plug to your company, and let's get back to the program. Yeah, it's a company called Trumio. We're building a search engine for the social economy, uh, the, the sharing economy. Say it in Sorry. English. One more time. Uh, it's a I search understand what a social search engine is, but what's the yeah? Purpose? So, so we see a lot of fragmentation out there in the world in in terms of uh, you know platforms like Airbnb, um, TaskRabbit, all uh -huh. these different you know, they're getting very very niche, and uh -huh. I'm not seeing a lot of ways to to have a unified experience for a user who wants to live their whole life on the sharing economy. Ah, so it'd be a directory of the Ubers and the Airbnbs and mm -hmm. the share the. Think of it more like an IFT for. Oh, sharing. like an ift. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Fascinating. Hmm. You, everybody said hmm when you said ift. Right. If Love it. That should be your new album. I'm a Jason big fan. It's, uh, it's a way to quickly cook up a recipe that hooks web services together. So uh, an it would be, would be an example would be every time I get an email from my wife, uh, please post it on Twitter. Now, you probably wouldn't want to do that. No. But uh, that's an example of the kinds of things that's that you can do. That's a great, do. great use of the app. Right. I use it because I think the if fucks happens, would be so I do have an if recipe going. If Anybody emails me with urge? Oh, I can't even now. I screwed it up. Because now everybody's going to email me with urge. <laughs> the subject line. I'm such an idiot. If you email me with urgent, I get a text message. Is that right? Yes. But I'm turning it off after the program. I'm yeah, I, should say, I, can, I can just watch the alerts roll in from oh. here. So right now what I actually do I use it for is every time I check in on Foursquare, ah. it saves it as a line in a Google Doc spreadsheet. So it has the location information stored off of Foursquare. Somewhere. What if it could you do if I, I save it check for the NSA. in, put it into my address book? Sure. That would be killer. That'd be neat. Put it yeah. into my address I mean, book? So many, Let's just dream so up things cool that they things. can't do and make What'd them you do say it. The, the key thing, I mean, if lets you do all this stuff, but the, the question is, can they get it out of nerd land, right? Because mm -hmm. the, the idea of like programming how your apps work together, this is like, you know, Excel macros. We've had this for... Yep. 30 years, but like the, the the whole thing, I love their app. All I want is to be able to do it. Yeah.
you know, more socially, share it more, be able to say, I made a smart set of rules, so you can use them. Because like, we think up, but that's all we do is we hook up to all your social networks and try to find smart things to do with it. So we'd love to pipe it all into IFT and, mm -hmm. and say, oh, well, it seems like you did three cranky tweets this week. We're going to go ahead and put a calendar appointment for yoga on your calendar next week. Um, and like that's totally doable, but we want normal. Did somebody? Here's my. Oh no, you know I was using another service to do that uh, urgent thing. But here's the one I have. If AppNet post equals Twitter, then I guess post it on Twitter. But you can create a recipe like this, and boom. If this, then that. Okay, listen. Enough plugs for them. Let's go to the next story. <coughs> All right. You want to talk about uh, the video? Let's do the video. Okay. Play the most salacious part of the video. Yep. It's coming right up. We're snorting that it's salt. The procedure for removing MacB antivirus software from your computer and is And we can follows. talk over this, yeah? First, make sure you have a full Brandis, backup. can you confirm I can uh, talk over this? Yes, phone. Back okay. it up. Back so, it up. for right. people who don't know, Very important. John McAfee created McAfee software and he made some money. He went to Costa Rica. Um, sir, should I be reading the instructions for He claims for the Mac that he PC? was joking really about making different. drug recipes and posting his laboratory mm, depending on which edition and version of MacBee's drug anti message malware boards. software is installed he said that was just a prank but on it was your a pretty computer, elaborate you may prank, have to click on remove but the idea is he's doing bad salts which i correct me if i'm wrong but that's the guy who that's the zombie drug where you guy bit the guy's face off in yeah. miami yeah mm -hmm. yeah this yeah he's i mean what, karen what also, karen where does one get bad where, where does one get bad salts? where do you get your bad no salts idea. from no wait is bad salts actually bad salts or is it is that like no. a street name for what it is? Bed, bath, salts, and beyond, I think, is probably Bed, bath, salts, and beyond? Yes, I'm going to buy, buy the stock. One. Yeah. You can go to Pier 1 and get just whatever you need. What, right. what should McAfee, the company, do when something like this happens? Because I think right now it's, this might actually be a good thing for them. Maybe they could pay him to change his name. That might be cheaper than that changing their name. That might be cheaper than changing yeah. their name. Yeah. I, and Neil, is this a good thing for McAfee? Because I'm kind of like, I want to go to the McAfee I, you know, website and check out what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're sort of like, their image couldn't be any more annoying, right? Like, they're the thing that pops up when you buy a Windows laptop that you haven't uninstalled everything right. from. So that, like, owning that space is not the mind share you're looking for. And then, you know, they make all their money in enterprise, so who cares what their consumer brand is? I think the thing for, for John, like, dude's crazy. He's been experimenting with every kind of drug he can synthesize for years in, like, the jungles of Guatemala, and Belize, and like, you know, I, that sort of like, this is totally in character for him. Mm -hmm. I think, what, what more damage is he gonna do? Like, they're already, it's, it's his name until they let it go. So there's sort of like, at a certain point, it's just like, it's like Charlie Sheen. What is Charlie Sheen gonna do that you're like, oh man, that's beyond the pale. You're like, that's who that right. guy is. You right. sort of, your expectations are so low. Here's, here's the thing, whoever can book John McAfee on the program, I will take you to lunch or dinner in one of the major cities. I have his phone number if you want to. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I sure. think Anil and I are both on a message board that John has been on for a really long time. No, and you're so kidding. He, no, he's been posting That's crazy true. stuff for years and years and years. Which message board is this? We can't talk about it. It's a private It's, it's a private, private one. NSA knows. Is it like a yeah. founder's message board? or? Sure. We'll say yes. Why am I not on it? <laughs> what happened here? How, you guys got a secret? You got we'll locked out later. something, We'll talk Jason. later. I got, it's, yeah, this is crazy. Ouch. Founders the Club, not rule, into Google The first group? rule of message board is don't talk about All right, about next story, board. next story. Listen, uh, John McAfee, uh, I, this is a crazy thing. Crazier than that video? Jim Gandolfini is dead. Oh, Heath terrible. Ledger oh. is dead. Oh, Lindsay Lohan, John McAfee, and... And here's... John McCann. And it's just and Charlie Sheen are all alive. I don't understand it. These these people are. You don't get to choose. How much drugs have Lindy, Lindsay Lohan, Charlie Sheen, and McAfee done collectively? I probably more drugs than there are in South America. They might all, be the biggest consumers of South of them. America. Yeah. Hollywood is out. But those three alone are any. still alive, and they're all three are working. I mean, John McAfee. There was going to be a bidding war between Maker Studios, and well, like they're already making a movie about his life. No, but he yep. created yeah. official McAfee mm -hmm. as a Twitter handle, and he created a YouTube channel. Uh, how many views? Can somebody tell me how many views this video has? This video has 2.1 million views already. Okay. Listen, I've been building YouTube videos for how two or three years, and like, I don't have a video with 2.1 million views. This guy is, he understands. Have you tried it. bath salts? Have you been? <laughs> All right. Have you been Karen, sought take after? a memo. <laughs> Matt, bath salts before every episode. <laughs> this is insane, though. Has you ever, have you ever been uh, sought after by a third world government for, for murder? murder? Work um, on that one. That helps. He, murder is a kind of, that's a fungible term. Sure. Because there is stand your ground. Jeez. All right, and I'm just going to make one, on. one public service announcement. 
We're not going to talk about the Mike Arrington. If you're if you're on this episode to hear about Jen Allen sticking to her claims that Mike Arrington allegedly did things to her, we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about the fact that Mike Arrington, etc. Okay, next story. Exactly. All right, so we had a... No, everybody's like, why are you not talking about it? It's like, I don't want to talk about it anymore, okay? We had Let an episode where we talked about that. We can go over we to that. We had the episode. That. You want to go see that episode, you can pull it up. We're not going to talk about it anymore. It's, it's in the court's hands now. All right, so Google Reader announced a few months ago they were shutting down July 1st. What happens? Dig says, we're going to build you a new reader. Mm-hmm. And okay. interesting story in Wired this week. Matt Honan, the guy who got hacked himself last fall, you might remember. Yeah. Um, beautiful, really well-researched, lots of insidery kind of stuff. He looked at the whole process of building it. They decided they wanted to make the onboarding experience really easy. They were going to put the dig buttons in there so you not just be able to know, you know that people are sharing things with their, what actually mm-hmm. they're reading. Okay, so com- combining Reddit with a reader. Got it. Right. Right, and they're going to make it available to 18,000 people who um, signed up with their uh, this weekend. And they're going to have the iOS app ready, uh, and Android might by launch, but the search function won't be ready. That's hmm. something that Google definitely had an advantage with. Right. So how are you replacing Google Reader, and what do you think is going to be necessary for their success? I stopped logging into Google Reader. I would log in like once every two months, mm-hmm. and I would be like, oh, yeah, nobody is publishing RSS feeds anymore, and Twitter replaced it. Jason, you worked on it. I started the it's project. You started the project. Yeah. It's my fault. It's totally his no, no. Fault. L- l- let's be honest here. Is is it a product that's the world doesn't need now that Twitter exists? Well, it didn't evolve. So I mean, our our initial. Uh, so Chris Weatherall was the engineer I worked with at, at Google on uh, on getting this off the ground, and we built an entire team around all of this. And from the very uh, inception of this, it was an outgrowth of Blogger. It probably never should have left Blogger. It would have mm. been better ingrained, right? right. Um, but you know that wasn't up to us. That was up to some some higher ups. And one of the first things that they asked us to do well, is. Well, you by higher ups, you mean Marissa? <laughs> There's sure Marissa. There were a couple. You other reported folks into in there Marissa, well. right? That's I did. Well known. I did. Yeah. What was she like to work for? Um, wow, this took a turn from <laughs> what are you replacing your RSS reader? Yeah. Um, she's Hopefully very smart. She's very demanding and has um, quite a. Um, uh, she she has surrounded herself by a lot of smart people. So. Uh, in terms of she got better Yahoo. over time, though, right? Uh, better at what? Better at her job. Managing people. Sure, managing people. Yes, she there were rumors early on that she would make people wait outside her office in line. She Senior did. Senior executive. Well, Is I that think, true or not? Uh, you said yes already. Yes, I said yes already. Here's uh, yes. So was that just insane? Like to tell senior executives. You're going to wait outside my office for X number of hours, so and I'll take you in water? Some, I mean, what is this, a deli? <laughs> with some perspective, yeah. Marissa was actually an RA in the dorms at Stanford. Oh. She was also a TA. She comes at, uh, or at least at the time at Google, came at things with a very collegial perspective, meaning, ah. hey, look, this is just like when I was a TA, and you would sign up for mm-hmm. office hours, that sort of thing. And so you know, Google, for a long time, was kind of like the off-campus version of Stanford. Got it. So I think treated that way um, mm-hmm. other people were used to that I at the time you know bristled a little bit at that that sort of thing and I think a lot of people did too who maybe came over from Netscape and maybe didn't go to Stanford and weren't quite used to that yeah you know, like, working with somebody wait, that way. I have yeah. to talk to you about Google Reader and there's 25 <laughs> million people using it and I'm right, going right. to go between 1 and 5 p.m. What? right right well and that I, was you back bought in the my days. company and you I may you paid millions of dollars exactly. from tens of millions of dollars for my company and I'm gonna wait Sure. So, I mean, a little there, bit weird. There, there was a little, little bit of weirdness there, but you know. But she, I, to I her defense, she was very young then, and she, she's sure obviously we become a colossal manager. Yes, now. and actually, I think I, I think she still remains Yahoo's best hope of turning anything around over there. I, I do think that she's. Um, what do you what what letter grade do you give her so far? She's At Yahoo, it's, it's coming on a year, right? July, August. Well, she's July. done some amazing things. I actually really love the the Tumblr move. I think Why that's a fantastic that? one. Well, when I left Google in two thousand seven, I. I um, I went uh, to New York, took a trip out there, and I wanted to meet two people. I wanted to meet the uh, the guy who built uh, Vimeo, mm-hmm. uh, Zach uh, Klein, right? No, Zach. Zach. Klein? No, no, yeah, no, no, Zach. No, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Zach Klein. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, and then the other one was I wanted to meet David Carp. Yeah. And so my friend uh, Dennis Crowley said, "Oh, you should absolutely meet David." I sat sat down with David and Marco, and they explained what they were doing, and it was like the two or three or four of them at the time. And um, you know, I saw a lot, a lot of like Evan Williams and myself mm-hmm. yeah. in in the two of them, like trying to hash things out. And I really thought they were onto something back then. 
um, David is very singularly focused on mm. product, right? right? And very, like, has a vision to the end. Mm. Uh, uh, and so for that reason, I think it's a great pickup because I think Marissa, every once in a while at Google, was frustrated with uh, the fact that Google was trying to be a media company, but it was not a good home to be a media company. No, terrible. But Yahoo had tried to be a media company, but had flailed at being a media company. So I actually During think, the Terry Semmel days. Yeah, so I actually think Marissa at Yahoo makes a lot of sense. I think they're, they could be... Because she can straddle both of those things. Well, I think she, she can brings... She bring the product side She brings and the, tech into media uh, in perhaps the right perspective and gets to focus there. And then, you know, Google gets to go focus on the technical stuff that they want to do. What letter And that, maybe that's why they aren't... Letter grade. A, B, C, minus plus. I, seems like an A minus B plus at, at this point in time, right. I, I would say. I would be in agreement. And, Neil, what are, you, what are your thoughts on the Tumblr acquisition and uh, Marissa's job um, so far? It, it, it's a little fraught for me. So I, I have this consultancy activate. My co-founder is Michael Wolf. We mm -hmm. did a lot of the work with Third Point that led them investing in Yahoo, and Michael's on the board. Mm -hmm. um, so I did work on helping to get Marissa on board. Wait, which Michael Wolf? Not the Michael Wolf, the burn no, rate. the one that... The, the quiet one who's not a jerk. The, um, okay, so the non-douche yeah. Michael Wolf. Yes, exactly. So so the one who was at McKinsey and, at, and ran MTV for a while. Got it. Um, and, uh, you know, and it was interesting because, you know, he, he told me uh, Marissa's looking at Tumblr, and I, like Jason, had been a fan of David's from the beginning. Um, I met him. He had, had done some work with um, my wife when she was helping start Series Eats, and I met him there, and I thought, like, this guy's got an eye, and I... Um, and I was like sort of aware I was underestimating it because like I think the sort of old blogger perspective on it was, oh, you just change a couple templates and everything's a Tumblr. Like it wasn't, you know, right. sort of missing the point of what was mm -hmm. interesting about it. It actually was more interesting in the way that like a, a live journal or something like that worked because there was that, that the social aspect built in. And so I was always like, there's something real here. It's exciting as a, as a like cheerleader for New York Tech. I was really excited. Yeah. And then... Um, so at the you know at the announcement event they had the, the Flickr launch event which sort of became the Tumblr launch event here, and one of the Times Square and uh, you know David was just that like lean forward excited, totally in sync with Marissa like they were you know both beaming and you know uh, that thing was like, I think this is gonna work and I mean I you know I got a dog in the fight like I I want this to work right but but um, I think my, it's brilliant. My gut tells me yeah. their homepage or Yahoo is a stream now. Yeah. Right. And Tumblr obviously has always been a great stream. And if I'm looking at, I want to buy not some IAB box ad unit. I want to buy a modern unit of an ad that goes into a stream. There, there's, you know, Twitter's got great scale, but there is nothing like a combination of on Yahoo's homepage and in every Tumblr stream. That's like a huge business way. And by it. stream, what you mean is it flows forever. So if you just go to Yahoo.com and you hit the space bar, it goes forever. Not just like. It is essentially, she turned it into a Tumblr blog, a Tumble blog. Yep. And yep. if this had a heart here, where it does have a share button, but it doesn't have like a heart or a reblog button, right. if I reblogged, it would say, yeah, you, you can, we'll cr create a Tumblr blog. Right. And you just create you a Tumblr. Everything on, yeah, everything on Yahoo Finance, everything it, on Yahoo. So Tumblr's also been particularly good at the mobile side of things. You know, they, yeah. they iterate quickly, they, you know, they see what works. And I think that, you know, for folks who are, you know, working with the web, we get frustrated because the web can change quickly and mobile development is hard to do or yep. harder to do. Um, and so when you see these teams that are actually executing well, mm -hmm. you know, she's doing a great job of picking them up. Uh, and yeah. so, so this, you know, these rumors I see of, what you're saying. You're saying by picking up all these mobile teams, yep. even if their products don't work, if they demonstrate, if their products didn't hit escape velocity, at sure. least they know how to work on the hard problems. Yes, and that's yes. brilliant. John, who would have guessed a year ago Apple would be copying Yahoo's design for an iOS app? Right. Yeah, they copied the weather app, you're saying. Yeah, which is crazy. I mean, maybe yeah. maybe Apple informed the, the Yahoo design. I don't know. Well, maybe, but you know, they, sometimes design heads in a certain direction and everybody's sure. sort of along for the ride. Yeah. These designers sure. are all... Right, but for Yahoo sure. to get there first on mobile is incredible. It, it is. is. It is. Their pace is definitely, definitely picking up. So should... Google have shut down the RSS reader. Google Reader, you're the founder of it. Should they have shut it down? So, I mean, it as an RSS reader was never the original vision. Mm -hmm. it, the, the vision was that it has all these social features and that it begins over time. In fact, way back when, we wanted to call it Google Fusion. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea that we had had at the time was that this should be the fusion of audio, video, text, all wow. these sorts of things, because we started seeing you know Google Video's internal efforts, and YouTube was not yet a Google property. Yep. And so we wanted this to be a consumption place. We wanted, mm -hmm. And building consumption interfaces is really hard. So we started with 
what had what was producing feeds, and it was easier to produce and consume those feeds from Blogger and Movable Type and TypePad and places like that. Um, so it started there. Mm. Um, I left the project maybe a year, yeah. year and a half in, um, you know, out of a little bit of frustration because yeah. the pace of innovation had slowed, and, so and from on high, it was kind of like not a priority. Do you think? Yeah. So Larry and Sergey, Marissa, they just don't. They weren't meter. particularly fans way back when. Um, you know, their their recent religion around social is, you know. It's interesting because, uh, you know, if like like Anil, if you've been around blogging for a long time, this is sort of pattern matching. You know right. what's going to work moving forward. Um, so it was kind of frustrating to see yeah. a huge uh, hiccup for Google and understanding social, and then now finally picking up and understanding. Now they're leaning into it 100%. Exactly, Everything exactly. has to be social. So yeah, it's, right. that's very. So difficult. having reader not. Uh, well, it's crazy because they have yeah, blogger. Yes, I know. But, so but even bloggers it's, it's in trouble blogger, now. I think everything we thought was social. Yeah, and everything we thought was social, or that we think of as social today, is originally stuff we thought of coming out of blogs. Right. So like they would have had a 10 year head start. So Google Reader would have been Google Fusion, and it would have been Tumblr-esque. It would have been Tumblr-esque. The original wow. idea was that you get a blogger friends page, not mm -hmm. unlike the- And they just wouldn't give you uh, the engineers, I guess, huh? Well, it wasn't about the engineers. It was, you know, when I went to take it to Marissa to say, hey, I'd like to continue this project, uh, uh, there was a VP of engineering at Google who said, we don't need another reader. We don't need to build this into Blogger. Um, go oh. take it somewhere else. So I took it to Consumer Web, and Consumer Web at the time was thought of as nothing social. So Marissa said, I'm happy to sponsor your project as long as you take out all the social features. So oh we took out all God. the social features. <laughs> what, a po what political BS? Well, that You're was her, that your was her features understanding. features couldn't be in there because it, it's a classic a management problem though it was I a mean, territorial thing but when you when you read about all these management cases of the uh, the outside of a company uh -huh. reflecting the inside right. it should there should actually be um some some differentiation where you don't have to represent that you're in consumer web to the outside just because anyway so yeah. so what happened was we started slowly you know sneaking out these little features like if you starred something it would actually produce a feed of all of the things and that I you could starred. see what my friend starred exactly so the, that was the killer feature that was the killer feature and we what started they, when there. they saw that were they upset that you made it no, I mean they didn't. They, they didn't really didn't pay attention or pay or know or any of those sorts of things. So <laughs> they then, tell you not to make social, and you go and make it. Well, it was a feature release after after the initial release, and then Sneaky we devil. and then we started after sneaking they in. These, looking. After stopped they stopped it. looking, yes. they, they, yeah. But okay. then but then we kept releasing like a little thing here, a little thing there, mm -hmm. and um and it snowballed a little bit, and then and then it it became the tool that people use to to consume. So I think my 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 core case around is Google Reader needed now? And I, I know Andrew McLaughlin well. He was at Google uh, during that time. Um, I just talked He's to Ed, the guy working on Edwin uh, from uh, Feedly yesterday, yeah. and and they have an interesting you know take reader rep yeah. replacement effort. I, I I advised them for a couple of years after I left Google. Uh, both of these guys are building really interesting things, but I think they're also taking lessons learned from mm. those battles in that. Uh, let's take the content plus social and do something new and interesting and relevant it, with final it. Final question on Google Reader. Is it too hard for them, Jason, to just simply um, spin it out and give it to people to make a startup? And did yes. you talk to them about it? It's just too technically difficult? Well, I had a number of people, you know, Jason Hirshhorn reach, yeah. reached out to say, hey, you know, what do you think? Right. Um, I've had, you know, the, the oddest one was I think the government of Malaysia or something like that reached out and said, we want to buy Google Reader. Can you help us connect us with the right person? I, did th you reach the answer out? Did is they this. reach out? The, the, uh, they, they did reach out directly to Google, but I, no, I don't no. know. No, no, did Google reach out to you? No, oh, Google did not reach out to me. No, uh, Google did not reach out to okay. me. Okay. Here's why. It is difficult to impossible to spin it out of Google. There, there are things that we did like we got really close to launch and blog search was supposed to provide us with, hey, here are the blogs that you should follow if you want to follow sports or the right. New York Mets. The only problem there is if you write a blog, you might write about the Mets one day and then write about finance the next. Right. So it's not, you know, blogs are not singularly focused. So uh, we actually, I made a, you know, like last minute call to the Google web crawl team and said, hey, can you just do a thing that tells me if you find an XML feed and and uh, we'll get a good match. And they said, sure, we can turn that on for your team. And so, you know, we had access to Google's web crawl oh, infrastructure. Incredible. N not anyone else on the mm -hmm. planet has access to that. And, uh, and actually keeping up with the pace of now what must be hundreds of millions of feeds being updated in real time, y you can't do that. You can't do that outside of Google. Hey, listen, uh, to my editorial team, cut out that uh, answer about Google Fusion. What a great answer. <laughs> Fusion? Fusion.
What a great name. The Thank world you. never got to see it. It's amazing. So many smart people there. Just really interesting insight. Let's do a final story. All right. I think we got to talk about. I, I remember at the time around launch talking to Shellen and that frustration around the name. That was the thing. I didn't even <laughs> care about the product, but you were like, they won't let me call it Fusion. <laughs> Yeah, that's because Sergey was actually working on a fusion, the Google Fusion Reactor, yeah, which is at Google X, which will be out right. in 2018, by the way. Right. <laughs> Sergey's like, oh, actually, I have a fusion. <laughs> uh, Google Fusion is actually, okay, we glass. have 17 Turn on engineers. The reactor. Right. Glass. Oh, glass. All right, so Loathsome. Facebook. Have you, what do you think of glass, Jalen? I tried one for the first time last Loathsome? week. Loathsome, you like it? You think it's stupid? Loathsome? I, I think, um, you know, it's garish right now, right? It looks, it looks like... You know, you're, an idiot. you're in a in a novel, right? Like uh, it, somebody comes to a dinner party with those glasses on. What do you do? Slap it off of their faces. There you yes. go. Anil, somebody comes to your dinner party with Google Glass on. What do you do? People don't come to my home with that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So basically, you're saying they get stopped at the door. <laughs> yeah, that's. This I is, can't. I, that listen, happen. I was at a. I'm, I can't go into any details on this. I'm on the dance floor, breaking it down. Sure. And somebody sure. gets on the dance floor with Google Glass. No, thank you. <laughs> I can't tell you who the person was. Right. You know the person. And I said, take those off. You're killing the dance floor. Was he just in the shower or? <laughs> it was not that person. This was an important uh, person. Uh, no, I think. Robert's important, but this was somebody at Google. So here's the thing. Wearing the them on the dance floor. And I was like, dude, you, now everybody's like, that nobody wants to dance because they think you're recording. It's like that dude who comes to a wedding and they're like, yeah, awesome. <laughs> and they like start, who's the dude who does that? Who starts videotaping you dancing at a wedding? It's like, no, nobody, what are you going to do with that video anyway? Who wants to see a bunch of bad people dancing sloppy at two in the morning at a wedding? Nobody wants to see that. Instagram video. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. end on that. Yeah. There, there we go. That's a good, good segue. Good segue. So this was the big event that Facebook was uh, promoting uh, yeah. for the last a week. The clips are 15 seconds long. There's no looping. They have 13 filters. You have the ability, of course, to crop and stabilize the video. Some of those features, of course, YouTube has had for a long time. Um, the interesting thing is 5 million videos have already been uploaded since the launch yesterday. Wow. And they reached a peak of 40 hours a minute during the NBA finals last hmm. night. So um, Vine versus Instagram, which would you prefer? And should YouTube be Anil, what do you think? Anil, give us your thoughts. Uh, I, you know, the, I'm always happy when people copy things. I think it's good to evolution, but like, I think what Instagram missed was the soul of why Vine worked, and that it was that it was like it was gif-like, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. so the looping, the shortness of it, it, the the even the sort of the, the the visuals of it really evoked gifs, which are a great medium and a very sort of web-native medium. And when you make it 15 seconds and you make it slow and you make it don't loop. Um, those all seem like minor differences, and obviously they were done so they could say they were different. Um, but the reality is, it's a different thing in kind. And that sort of like BS, you know, retroactive, oh, well, Bourbon was always supposed to have video. Uh-uh, like, right. no, you, you copied fine. And and I actually, like, I would have so much more respect, like, System's a super smart guy. I mean, you know, no question about yeah, it. Yeah, no doubt. Like, he came out, and he came out, and he was kind of soulless, and seemed like he'd been <laughs> brainwashed, right? And it's like, if he'd come out with some heart and said, Zuckerberg you know drank his blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, right. And if he'd come out and said, you know what? Vine taught us a lesson. So we saw what we could do to take what they did right and put it in our context and do it even better. I think that's a really that astute be... point. Because if you look at Zuckerberg. I'm sorry, corporate counsel it would stop him. Exactly. Uh, but look at Zuckerberg with that, Poke, right? Like, So now Zuckerberg's like, oh, we can't beat Snapchat. They won't sell to us, so we're going to make Poke. And now nobody's used Poke. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a laughing stock. It makes Zuckerberg look like he's just a... Absolutely. But think of what they emphasize. Poke, poke the story was Zuck coded on it himself. This story is we had a small team, but we just want you to know this isn't a really big thing. Mm. And I mean, like the whole thing is like, oh, well, look, we can just throw a weekend's effort at something or we're going to clone what you do. And it's like, you know what? I'm a user. I don't give a crap how many coders you had on this and mm -hmm. how long they worked on it. It's like, is there something meaningful here? And you go in and it's like, this is different. And you didn't understand socially, emotionally what was happening for a user of this thing. And you just clone the superficial aspects and it makes you look clownish. And that's why you can't have any soul when you talk about it in front of people. But I think, I mean, taking the counter uh, there is who, who cares, right? This is all Silicon Valley, like yeah. inside baseball inside sort baseball. of stuff. Although I did think uh, something very funny happened yesterday was immediately Will Sasso, the comedian who's been great on Vine, right? He yeah. makes these 
Six yes. second epics. He's I mean, amazing. just amazing. And he does this like goofball thing where he's got uh, like a lemon in his mouth and he spits it out. Well, he, you know, so he shoots an Instagram video. He has the lemon in his mouth. Six seconds go by. He looks at his watch. He waits, he waits, he waits. Then he spits it out. It's hilarious. You should look it up. Will Sasso is his username on Instagram yeah. as well. And I thought that that was probably the most brilliant takedown of 15 seconds being too long. But I think what everyone's missing is you don't have to shoot 15 seconds. Are you showing it now? Oh my word, that'd be awesome. Uh, you don't well, have you, to. You, you don't have to shoot 15 to. seconds, right? right. But, but it's most the expectation when you're flipping through, you're going to have to pause there, right? Because what happens is you, you do the sort of one flick of the screen, right. and you've already committed to potentially a full minute of your life. Right. But you've you. I think Instagram is focusing attention, like mm -hmm. most of these other things. And now that they've said, sure, video two. Um, you know, are there Vine loyalists that are, they're so loyal to Vine that they won't switch, or are they so disappointed well, think, that they weren't able to do video with Instagram? About it is when you strictly copy something and do something mm -hmm. reactive, you don't take the time to think about on a base level why sure. this product exists in the world, right? Because you're just like, well, it's working for them, therefore I have to have it, right? And the best products come from a place of like, and you know, we have three product guys on the call, like, it's very much, you know, starting at zero and saying something needs to exist in the world that solves this problem that I have or this need that I have, and what should it be, right? When you make right. Boxer, it's like sure. you're starting from zero, right? And sure. Like, and we, well, look, what we, should email be in 2013, and why are kids giving up on email? Because it's not social. Right, and we've already made mistakes, and we'll learn from them, and we'll uh, change and move forward. You didn't forward. start with Mailbox and say, oh, how do we make Mailbox better? No, we didn't start with Mailbox. Say, how do we ma make Mailbox better? But I, I, I think that- I I was talking to Shellen about this thing before Mailbox. <laughs> yeah, <of laughs> that's course. very true. Well, people come to the same, that's, I mean, that's one of the things about entrepreneurship. Sure. Everybody's coming to readers right now and trying to do readers. Right. And everybody looked at Mail and said, Mail could be better, whether well, it's Sparrow, Mailbox, or e yours. Evan and I used to talk about this a lot, a lot where um, there was this perception that first mover advantage would get all the users. And we jokingly said, you know, hey, we have second mover advantage, right? You actually yeah. get to watch what the first guy has done, where they've stumbled, and then maybe go a little bit faster. Which they didn't do with Instagram. They didn't do that with Instagram. They did add, you know, something that's possibly going to retain users. What's that, filters? No, I'm saying if, if oh, you're looking at Instagram you're not saying, lose Instagram people. hey, we're not going to lose our core people who want to do video to Vine. We're going to retain them I, by this feature. And who knows, over time, maybe the they'll improve they that. Added. This is a message to Kevin Systrom. The push to record, they didn't do, right? It's not like you hold your thumb to record. That you was do. the On the image, on the viewfinder, or you just hit you, once to hit record? Uh, or do you I'm do not, little sure. snippets? I've only done one. Is it is it snippets, Neil? Do you know? You can you can do little snippets. Yeah, I think you can do yeah you can do little pieces and you can delete the last one. Okay, so here's mm -hmm. what it needs to be because I've been through this. You need to be work be able to work on multiple vines at once. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Because I go to Disneyland, and if I start a vine like I want to do a, a day at yep. Disneyland, I can't do a day at Disneyland where I do f seven different rides mm -hmm. unless I keep my phone open, and you know I keep that yep. app running. Right. It's so dumb. Right, so, and the app gets closed if you load another app. Exactly. Yeah, yep, so yep. that's number one. Just ridiculous. Why, do, why is there not multi vine right. support? Because I would like to do seven days of my beard growing or something, right? Right. Number two, it should give you each clip in a stacked list. Right. And with that little drag thing and let you switch the order. I have no idea why they won't allow you to load from your personal camera roll as well, right? I, I think they just haven't gotten there yet. I think they've, they've yeah. done a very deliberate. You're such role. an apologist, Daniil. There's no question they're going to do pick a clip from your thing. There's no question they're going to do drafts. This is sure. Um, but but that's the thing is like you get to do that if you made that format work. And it's funny because like the short video thing isn't new. There was 12 seconds. There right. was uh, yeah a lot of people right, had, right. had long Flickr had long photos right and everybody freaked out about that. It was 30 photos. seconds yeah. right. 30 seconds was yeah, the limit or, a minute. or 90 seconds. 90 like seconds. What impact does this have on YouTube, Jason Challen? On YouTube. I, I think all of this is a, you know, a little bit of a minor threat to YouTube, but YouTube is probably the biggest threat to YouTube right now. I mean, the thing that they're doing right now is they're building, they, they have built this platform, right? You wrote about this a few weeks ago in your newsletter. It's, it's fantastic in that the infrastructure, that's, that's hard to replicate. Yeah. And the thing that Impossible. you, by moving off of YouTube, are, you're going to feel is you're probably going to move to some other big platform. You're not going to yeah. do it yourself, right? Because it hurts uh, yeah. building all that infrastructure. Vine and Instagram are now going to be that infrastructure mm. for makers and creators, right? So 15 seconds is maybe actually a competitive advantage for somebody like a Will Sasso, a comedian, um, except that he just made that brilliant takedown of, you know, of that, that length being really long. 
um, I don't know, teasing this in a 15 second format. I, I think we are going to see video ads move pretty quickly into Vine. I wonder if we could make a Vine of like the best moment of the show. Could we do that? Or a 15 second clip on Instagram? Maybe we should do that. Why don't we you try can't, that? You can't do it on Vine right now. I've talked to them. Do it I wanted to actually, for the Boxer launch, just do like a little bit of a video showing how, how to use it and using. Um, you know, like a back door to a like upload that video. Yeah. And Twitter, I reached out to somebody at Twitter and they said, we can't do that. Yeah. You know, they you did it for it. Iron so You have to do it I over think. the shoulder. Oh, they, they did it for they, Iron Man. They did it, or Avengers, one of these, yeah. they, you know, they teased a, a coming coming yeah. thing, but they're sort of in the early stages of that. Hmm. And Jason, by the way, you did ask Kevin Systrom in October 2011 about video. Okay, let's hear that. We have a clip? We do have a clip? Let's watch the clip. Here we go. 2011. Kevin Systrom in 2011. On this Are you service. opposed to video, or do you like video? I love video. Uh, it's just not right for Instagram <laughs> at this moment, um, and here's why. Uh, mobile phones, as exciting as they are, um, you know the networks upon which they're built, the mm. 3Gs, the edges of the world, uh, doing video really well in a way that is you know, Instagram snappy and quick is simply just a tough problem and, and one that we want to face um, and work on in the future. But what the problem is now is that uh, you just don't have the networks to support a great experience. Um, that being said, I think... Yeah, that's... Oh, so he, he... It was obvious he wanted to do it. He just felt the 3G networks wouldn't be able to sustain it. And it was before somebody well, decided... he wasn't thinking of constraining the Eclipse. He wasn't thinking of constraining Eclipse. That's exactly right, I know. All right. Uh, do we have a final story? Let's do one more story. All right. Well, we were talking about Yahoo earlier. So Yahoo reportedly buying Zobni for 30 to 40 million and eyeing Quickie for about 50 million. So Marissa has done 14 acquisitions so far. Only 14? 14. Feels like 50. Feels like a lot more. Can we pull Tumblr the being... clip where I said in the show, she would, if I was the CEO, I would buy 30 companies in the first year? So try and find that clip. Because right as soon as she got announced, that was like one of the things I said. All right. So what do you think? Quickie and... Uh... Zobni. Okay, so you start with yeah. Zobni and then you will do uh, Quickie. So when I was at uh, AOL, we, uh, we worked right Inbox next backwards. to the mm -hmm. Zobni folks. Um, Bonaforte is a smart guy. Um, you know, the only issue right now is that it's maybe not a fantastic exit for the Zobni folks because I think they've, they've raised, raised about 40. 40 and yeah. and then but they would do 40. a carve out, wouldn't they? Uh, potentially, sure. I'm sure they would do something for management, but that that's always tough as an entrepreneur. Um, you know, I've had I've faced that situation before where people want to explain wanna, the situation. So the situation is this: where someone comes to you and says, "Hey, look, we'd like to buy your company, um, but actually, what we're really only interested in is this is an aqua hire situation where we want to we just we really like your team, right? And so we think the thing that's right is you know you give back your money to your investors, but then we do a carve out for each of the like founders, and we're going to give you bonuses based on you know. Uh, either because the retention company or something raised else. an amount of money that is either less than or equal to what the purchase price is. Right. So let's say you raised a million on a you know five million valuation, then you know they're saying here give a million back to your investors. Don't don't return any sort of upside to the investors. Right. It's a push Just for walk them. away, and then you personally will gain. The problem is as a as a founder. You, who's going to give you money ever again if you right. do that to your investors? I've right? got so like that's, five of these in my portfolio. Right, so it, it it's difficult. Um, so uh, five, you know, five, sometimes two. the investors are happy to get anything back at all. Yeah, but they're betting on people who are going to make or, and take huge risk because they really want that upside. They don't mm -hmm. want they don't want their money back. Yeah. Um, and Zomni launched, of course, at TechCrunch for you the first year. Right. Yeah, um, we great guys. Do have a. Oh, we have a clip of Zomni launching? Yes, I think Bryce will have that one queued up. For okay, us. God, let's see it. Let's see them launching. It's inbox backwards, by the way. Okay, so uh, you guys can watch clips on your own. Uh, Anil, <laughs> uh, what about uh, Quickie, which I think was a tech, the first TechCrunch Disrupt winner, I think? I never understood yeah, that yeah, company. They, they, that was a terrible idea. I didn't either. They pivoted a bunch of times, and they were like, I mean, I, I think I heard more about Eduardo Saffer and investing than I heard about anything from the product side of that company. Oh, look, it's Vine. It looks, they turned it into Vine. Yes. Yeah, so one they, tap. They laid it on is, is the one tap video recording, which is like, oh, finally, a, a video sharing app. So I think this is a pretty clear case of a talent aqua hire that they're like, okay, they know how to... Uh, at least iterate on an app and ship something, and that's good. Enough. The original idea was bold. It was, we're going to do visual search. So you play. Remember the first original quickie, you know, screenshots were like, right. you would play. Didn't the, Truvio do something like that, too, for video? No, exactly, yeah. It was, it was very bizarre. Like, you would go have an information experience. Here's an example. Like, they would play something about, uh, let me see if I can find an image. 
I, I think click I, on Eiffel Tower, and what it would do is it would play you the Wikipedia information. It'd be like the Eiffel Tower yeah. was built at this I time. It was like basically taking DBPD and putting Siri on top of it, which made it feel like the Minority Report. It was a good, what do you call it? A good like um, demo. But who is ever going to use it? Everybody has that dream that you're going to automate the creation of a huge library video and suddenly you have YouTube. And it's like, you know, people can tell a robot made it and they don't want to watch it. God, I'm getting pitched on so many robot making video companies. They're like, yes, you could basically read the AP news story, put stock images in it and then publish it. And I'm like, God, that who would want to watch it? There was a I mean, look, at, look at John McAfee. That doesn't come from a robot software video maker. No. Right. Although, if you went to his wiki page, in fairness, I think bad salt and strippers would come up very high. So you That's might be true. able to, but you wouldn't be That's able to actually recruit story. the strippers to do the dancing. I, I think the interesting thing about the you know those those companies acquired is um, how quickly some of them have uh, you know died. Meaning, they I, I think Marissa smartly or someone there smartly has said. Okay, look, Astrid, we want you to come on board. Clearly, you have some domain expertise in this area, but your product is ending. So rather than yeah, let it linger, they, they've quickly said, okay, look, this thing's ending. You're now going to go work on Yahoo tasks or travel or Does whatever. Does iOS 7, final story, suck? No. no or is it great? Sinister. Rated on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 to 10? I mean... 10 being the best design product ever. Uh... We'll give it a seven and a half. Seven and a half. And Neil, what do you give it? I think the user experience is probably a seven or eight, and the skin on it is probably a three or a four. <laughs> um, and what they should have done is kept the old look and, and fixed the UX first and then gone towards making it pretty later. I, I disagree. I mean, I, 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 I think that there were some, uh, you know, careful things that they did not do, particularly, um, you know, as a font nerd myself. Some of the spacing in between things felt crowded and cramped and felt like maybe it was a little rushed. Let's talk and about this here for a second. Are... Let's take this one screen. Let's just take one screen, the control center. Okay. What the frack is going on on this screen? I, I feel like I just pulled up like a high fidelity system from 1972. I think you're also looking at a two-dimensional uh, image on something that's now a three-dimensional interface. So oh. I think what's happening is the, you know, the background now has depth. Mm -hmm. And that is actually setting it apart from some of its competitors. Uh. So as you look at it, you might actually gain a little bit more understanding by treating that as if that's an opaque piece of glass on it top of opaque, something. Yeah, yeah. And they've done this really interesting thing where it's a, it's called parallax, uh, where you have uh, an image that's larger than the bounding box of, of the phone behind huh. it. So as you tilt it, it's actually making minor adjustments. Wow. Uh, so... You, you're not getting the full thing from a two. So, two do you have to engine. take drama and wear the wristbands with it or not? Yeah, and it, I I do wonder about that actually. Uh, that, like that I, it could I have make no interest sick. in getting motion sickness. But what the hell is going on here? This is brightness, obviously, right? right? So, just looking at this, like you look at it, you're like, what the hell is going on here? So, well, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. I guess that's nighttime. Do not disturb. This, this, like this exact problem was solved on Windows Phone, like four years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the Palm Pre, when that was the thing. Like this problem's been solved. Like, how do you do a flat design, nice version of a control panel you can get to from anywhere? And they're like, they have a little too much. Like, I love. I, I think Jason's point about the layers of 3D surfaces that you've got controls on is totally right. But you can't tell how good an idea that is because there's so much ugly crap festooned in front of it that looks unfinished and amateurish. Steve Jobs would never have released this one screen. Well, no, I mean... I, I don't believe he would have released it. I will say I want it because if you look at the screen, clearly somebody looked at the statistics of the things you do most when you just flip up. Airplane mode, Wi-Fi networks, Bluetooth, do not disturb and lock, brightness, right? Those were things you do multiple times a day. Here's your music, airdrop and airplay, which you use often. And look at this, the flashlight in the bottom left. I, I do welcome They're the... making a flashlight app, so That's they just right. killed every single flashlight app. That's right. It does feel a lot oh, like no, a... No. Uh... <laughs> What's that? <laughs> he said, oh, no, not oh. that. What? Are they killing all the yeah, flashlight right, apps? Right, right. Flashlight app. I can't but actually, they decimated the flashlight app market. Behind the scenes, the in, in the app store, they have quietly not been allowing new apps to be flashlight apps outside of the one that is a flashlight app. Uh, so and this is very interesting with this, like... You can scroll through your Safari pages, very interesting, which is what you can do in the Chrome browser. So it feels like a lot of this is catch-up. What do you think? How much is this sure. is catching up to Android and Google's interfaces, and how much of it is new stuff? When I, I saw catching it. up to Windows Phone more than an Android. Why? Because it was an active tile? Because so Windows you... had the best, yeah, well, yeah, the active data, and Windows had the better UI. It still has a better UI than Android. Like, 
I mean, it's, it's a shame there aren't more apps or Microsoft isn't able to get to market or whatever, but like in terms of what's influencing design, the thing they did with, you know, the, the Metro UI, I think is. Yeah, like but Metro UI Apple is also, also Microsoft but, but we, tiles. Yeah, Active but we tiles. should yeah. mention that Anil Dash, if, if you listen to his heartbeat, it's actually the Windows 95 startup sounds. It so is actually. No, it is true that Windows tile, like when I was, I was talking to somebody who's inside of Microsoft, and I was just like, wow, this is incredible. Like, I actually, th what they said to me, the insider said, we leapfrogged Apple and everybody with this, like, you know, one OS for desktop, tablet, mm -hmm. whatever. And I, and I said, was that a good idea? And he goes, it might not have been. Hmm. Interesting. Because we now have to educate consumers as to th this, this touchscreen desktop on your, you know, laptops or whatever. They would have actually had better sales if they didn't make that investment of leapfrogging Apple. But who would ever thought... Yeah that Apple would get leapfrogged by Microsoft. And what does this say about Microsoft, Anil? Yeah. Well, there's the, the thing is, like, uh, Apple is, is, is learning from Microsoft really at the superficial level, right? Just the sort of the cosmetics of it. Apple's, you, like, the actual interactions are very different. And so I think that's the sort of best of both worlds, is you want to have a real competitor. And the problem is there was no competition for, like, a decade around who's doing good UI or UX. And I think that's sort of, that's the interesting part, is at least there's a, an up the ante. For Microsoft, I sort of almost feel bad for them of like, they keep doing really smart, innovative things and either it gets ignored or like in the Xbox case, like they got a total bum deal on the, the, the deal around sharing used games or whatever. Like they were doing something really innovative around digital downloads. It's like moving past discs and they've got all these hardcore gamers that are like, what about my old DVD ROM? And they're like, who cares, man? Like that's not the deal. Yeah, and people so I think, I think you, Yeah, like across the board. In, in terms of... In terms of leapfrogging forward, I think um, that it's a case of beauty is only skin deep with with the Windows Phone stuff or Windows 8 stuff. On the on the surface, they've got these tiles, but once you drill into the applications like OneNote or mm -hmm. things like that, it feels like the same old Microsoft stuff. And I think that um, they're not developing that rich community of application developers. They're paying people. They're starting mm -hmm. them off. They're giving them a lot of money to build good apps. That or should change, cool. though, because they have a hundred million, hundreds of millions of desktops. Sure, but are they making those folks money consistently the way that the Apple mm -hmm. App Store does or the way that and the Android stores do um, I, on well, Amazon? I don't think they... I was gonna say I don't think the Android like Android proper doesn't really make developers a lot of money. So sure, if you're Amazon saying, might. We need to be on every Amazon. Right. Is. But if you're saying if you're saying we need to make a platform just to, or we need to make an app just to be on the platform, then you would go to where there's hundreds of millions of Windows. Would you, you guys see the uh, battery swap on the Tesla yesterday? Pretty I cool. did. I did. That's pretty impressive. Here it is. Look at this. So he he had uh, Alon had two cars uh, fill up in gas, and he had two. Ba two Teslas, the battery's being swapped. You can't see it. They should have done an undercarriage thing, but the battery comes out with a bunch of things. Boom, the bolts go in and out. And he removed two full batteries in the time it took, in less time it took than to fill an Audi with gas, like another sedan. And they made a point of going to the fastest gas station in LA. They also, um, I mean, not to undersell this, but what was going on with the gas tank in that Audi? I think that was like an eight, A8L or something. It was like a 23-gallon <laughs> tank. Who has a 23-gallon uh, I don't know. Oh, you know what? I have an SUV, so maybe it's a little bit of a larger tank. But anyway, it could go. Let's just forget about doubling it. Sure, sure. A little fair enough. Chip. Fair, but they can it was they can swap a battery in under two minutes. It was fantastic. Yeah. Well done. What well do you played. think? Is he the heir to Steve Jobs, most interesting entrepreneur alive? He's the heir to Tony Stark. There you go. Is I he the know. most interesting entrepreneur alive? Do you, I expected you, him to fly away after the end of that video, like right? Absolutely, put his fist down and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. The thing, the thing that makes him so interesting to my mind recently is leaving forward.us. Oh, yeah. So leaving Mark Zuckerberg's political action committee because he's like, I don't think you guys did this. I think you did this in a cynical way, and we shouldn't be cynical. That's leadership. Like, that is like, like – there are going to be guys that try to make rocket ships. There are going to be guys that try to make sports mm -hmm. cars. Like, somebody to say – there's a line of how we spend our money with principle to impact politics, and you crossed it, and I'm out after he's already in. And what it, what was exactly the thing that these guys did at Four U.S. that was so loathsome? The the, the, the tactics, right? So immigration reform is going to pass. We, we, uh, that's great. The thing they did is they said, well, in order to kind of help it along, let's buy ads for any random cause from anybody anywhere on the political spectrum, even if it has nothing to do with so the one they, they got in trouble for was Pipeline.xl, or Pipeline.xl. Look at me adding a dot to anything that goes on in my life. It, it's not a startup, man. Right, it's right. It was so the, what, what, is, is it Y Comedy or Techstars Pipeline.io? <laughs> no. 
It was the, uh, it was the, it, wasn't it the Alaskan drilling initiative? Yeah, this initiative? is the, yeah. like, kill everything in Alaska by putting a big oil pipeline to make rich oil companies more money. Right. Kill so let's, let's accept that, yes. We'll accept that to be true. Yeah, sure. sure. But I think... I think um, I summarized it nicely. I, I think what, what Elon has done better than most folks in the green space is he's looked for these little gee whiz moments like a 90 second battery swap mm. and and recognize that there needs to be some sex some cool some interesting mm. piece to what's going on he's a product person right? right so he's got the dream as well as the product vision to say hey guys this is a nice car but let's make it a great car yeah. let's 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 go from let's double down on good and maybe we'll yeah. be great yeah, and Ev told me, he said the Tesla is the iPhone of cars. That was like the first. You know how Ev got his car? <laughs> I had, this is a good true story. I had oh number God. one. I'm throwing you shade right now. You throwing me shade? Come I'm on, because I'm shade. name dropping? Of course. Throw me no, shade? No, because I, I, All right, I, I, Sassy, I forget it. I will tell my story. All right, let me ask, let me ask the super fans. <laughs> hold on a second. You're throwing shade because you work with me for too long. Super I'm fans, do you? I'm saying, I just I forgot that you're you're like the world's foremost Tesla salesperson. Anyway, listen. <laughs> Let me ask the super fans. Super fans, do you want to hear this? There's a microphone right there. Super fan in the middle. What's your name again? Andrew. Andrew, right? How you doing, Andrew? Pretty good. You want to hear my story about Ev Williams Tesla? I don't think I have a choice. Now I got the super fans throwing shade at me. This is crazy. All right, nobody. Hears I do want to hear it though. All right, I listen. Do. Genuinely. Bottom line, I'm taking my Tesla. I got the, the week I got my Tesla. I'm taking my Tesla home. I got, we got the Tesla. I took Ev for a drive. He's like, this thing's incredible. I was like, you should get one. He's like, the waiting list is six, seven months. I was like, go put a deposit down. Forward me the deposit. I'll introduce you to Elon, and I'll tell him like you're a baller guy. Da da da. And if somebody cancels, because once in a while somebody cancels, they can't wait for the car or whatever. Maybe he'll move you up. Boom. He got like the car within 30 days. Nice. And it was great because this is, and th the same thing happened with Saka. The thing is, everybody who owns this car sells three, which is ex exactly what happened. Because now Evan Williams has sold two or three. Kevin Pollock has sold two or three. Saka sold two or three. Everybody who drives it, it spreads like a virus. Like, you just sat it in. I did. I did. And you were like, why don't I have one of these? And I said, because you're an idiot. Right. Right. I think actually what I wasn't aware of was that they're actually selling a web browser on wheels. It, yeah. it has a full screen web browser that you can use in traffic to get yeah. into all sorts of accidents. No, no. Here's the best part about the car. Finally. Every 30 days, it updates the software over the air, and you get, like, five new features. You don't even have to go to the App Store and say, update all your apps? No, you get a look. No. <laughs> it doesn't have that. <laughs> it's, it doesn't, no, it does actually say that. An alert comes, and it says, please plug in your car and Amazing. do an alert. What time would you like to do it at? We've set it for 2 a.m. All right. Sets it for Put 2 me down for 2. All right. There you go. Two sold. There we go. Two sold. All right. Anyway, it's been a great episode. Uh, everybody, uh, thank our sponsor, Snap Terms, and also our friends over at um, Mailchimp. Uh, thank you to the uh, No Yo guys. Congratulations on that, and to uh, my other super fan here, uh, Karen. Great job reading the news. And everybody, go check out Boxer. Get Boxer, correct? Getboxer.com. Get boxer or get just boxer. go to the App Store and search for Boxer. Get Boxer. Get Boxer. Get Boxer.com. And then uh, Anil, yours is. Um, it's up. Think Up, which is, uh, we're still in preview, but uh, we opened up a sign up, so at least you can get on the waiting list if you are watching now. Thinkup.com. Think and what the hell am I going to get? Uh, it'll coach you on how to get more out of the time you spend on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all your other social networks. Hmm. Too bad you left YouTube. Is it an app? I haven't totally left YouTube. I'm going to use it it's for marketing. A it's, a, it's a service. Um, actually, one of the things that it's going to be really good for is if you've got a followership and an audience on YouTube, how do you bring them along with you to other networks. Oh, ho, ho, ho. so only your audience play. Interesting, huh? Hmm, there's a little breaking news there. Think up as an own your audience play. Now, wait a second, is the... Um... Um, it's actually, the way I, I describe it is it's, it's um, quantified selfies. It tracks what you're doing on social media. Quantified and, and selfies. Huh, all right. Now well, this I'm is throwing you shade. Now I'm trying no, to I, the shade no, is being. I, I think I started it. I started it. <laughs> Wait a second. Here's the introduction video for Think Up. That's actually probably a little out of date, that one. A little out of date. Understand your social networks. Yeah. Free open source, web app capturing, Twitter, app, Facebook. I got it. All right, listen, I want this. Is it like Get Little Bird, or it's more for like inward than outward? It's more inward. It's much more of like, it does fun stuff. It tells you like, this is your biggest fan last week on Facebook. And it mm. reminded me that I haven't posted a photo in three days and people want to see pictures of my kid. And wow. Stuff like that. I love it already. I, anything that does analysis, I like the selfie analysis. Um, yeah. 
Everybody can follow at Shellen, S-H-E-L-L-E-N. And everybody can follow Anil Dash. Um, Anil Dash, amazing uh, tweeter. Amazing. Jason Shell, he's good. He's good, but not good. good. Oh, my. Um, Brad. uh, Everybody gets shade. There's enough shade to go around. There's enough shade to go around. Hey, Brad from uh, Kumbia. Kumbia? Yeah, that's the previous company that I've been with. But it's Brad Heitman. What's the new? It's called Trumio. T R U M I O. T R U. At Trumio. Yep. M. I O. I O. Trumio. Everybody follow at Trumio, and uh, next episode is going to be explained a little more clearly. This is such an innovative idea, it's hard to understand. And thanks uh, to our friends, uh, Ellie and Andrew, over at Noyo. What, you guys have a favorite episode, Ellie? Yeah. Andrew? What are your favorites? Uh, yeah, I was going to drop a shout out to uh, Jeremy Hitchcock. Oh, no from, doubt. Uh, your road trip up to New England. He's great from Dine. Yeah, so yeah. we're uh, fellow New Englanders. and. Uh, oh, really? Oh, yeah, we're in Providence, Rhode Island. Great. And uh, Jeremy's been a uh, real mentor. I didn't know to that. To us. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. He's, so they have a real uh, sense of community over at Dine. Oh, yeah. It's an awesome place, and uh, I think it's a great model for uh, entrepreneurship in smaller cities. You know about their geek summer camp, right? Uh, I was right. doing a geek summer camp. This is a crazy thing, where they get all these geeks together and they just hang out, August 7th uh, and August 18th. Go check out the, uh, just search geek summer camp. It's really cool. All a bunch of geeks getting together and building stuff and having fun. Geek summer camp. A free plug for Dine. You have a favorite episode, uh, Andrew? Oh, no, that was Andrew's. Ellie. Yeah, definitely over the uh, the launch 2012 recap with uh, Scoot Network's Clint from Space Monkey. Yeah. It definitely got us to apply. Got us excited about it. So. Oh, that. Oh, really? That's yeah. how you did. That was the reason we really found out about See? launching. Got really it worked. It. See, it worked. <laughs> she starts sounding like my wife. That's what my wife does. Whenever she's right about something, she goes, "See." That must and be then she all the time. Me in the ribs. <laughs> oh, it's, it's this is a multi time a day thing. Sure. I'm like. Baby, did you see this thing like fresh juices with the press? And she's like, I told you about that a year ago. I'm like, really? She's like, see? And she bangs me right in the ribs. It hurts. Thanks to my lovely wife uh, for saying, see? Anything else? Anybody else I need to thank here? What about, oh, Launch Education and Kids is next week and it's sold out. But if you got money, I'd probably take your money anyway. So there'll be a cancellation. There's always we've a cancellation. Got, we've got great fireside chats. Who are the three fire stretchers? Mitch Kapoor is going to be our first mm. one opening the wow. event. Wow, legend. Yes, and then the next day we've got Linda Wyman of lynda.com. Legendary. And then Daphne Kohler of Coursera. Legendary. Look at that. You booked all three. Indeed. Look at and, you, editorial director. And all those... Air fireside, director. Those fireside chats will be released as twist episodes this Ooh, summer. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. And it is sold out thanks to Pearson and School Messenger. We did the rehearsals yesterday. Absolutely fabulous company. It's going to be great. Uh, June 26th and 27th. But yeah, if you do want to go, join the mailing list because there will be a couple of seats opening up, I'm sure. Um, thanks, DeMont. Thanks, everybody. Brandis, good job. We'll see everybody next time on This Week in Startups.